The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your Heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have the reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your almsgiving may be in secret and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received the reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received the reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to be fasting except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the best memories of my teenage years was rebuilding car engines. Carburetors, crankshafts, valves, pistons, it didn't matter. To me, a car engine was a gigantic erector set with a big welcome mat that said, let's do this. Of course, the creme de la creme of any engine rebuild is that all-important tune-up. To hear an engine purr like it was brand new is something of an art form. But how sweet that sound is when everything works in perfect harmony. Today, we celebrate Ash Wednesday, a day that begins our 40-day pilgrimage of fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. It is a time when the church invites each of us to undergo our own spiritual tune-up, if you will, to give Jesus permission to transform our hearts and our minds, to rebalance our spiritual lives, to run in perfect harmony with God's will. So to begin, let us take a few moments to consider the spiritual significance of this 40-day journey that we call Lent. In Scripture, the number 40 portrays a time of testing and setting a new direction in our lives. Some of scriptural examples include Noah's Ark and during 40 days of rain. Moses spent 40 years in the desert before God called him to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. The Israelites wandered 40 years in the desert before they entered the Promised Land. And yes, Jesus, after he was baptized by John, spent 40 days in the desert to fast and pray before he publicly set out to proclaim the good news of salvation. It is in this scriptural setting that the Church calls us to 40 days of fasting, prayer, and almsgiving to prepare our hearts to witness the greatest moment in all of human history, passion, death, and resurrection of God's only Son, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who was sacrificed on the cross to endure the full consequence of sin on behalf of all humanity. Lent leads us directly to Holy Thursday to revisit that moment when Jesus instituted the Holy Mass as he transformed the Passover meal into his own body and blood that we receive in the Holy Eucharist. Today's gospel focuses our attention on three key areas of spiritual growth that include fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. So let's begin with fasting. 
The church asks that all baptized Catholics have one full meal on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. In addition, all Fridays in Lent are considered days of abstinence, meaning no meat is allowed on any Friday during Lent. This is a serious obligation for all Catholics. There is, however, one caveat to this obligation, and that is, if someone has a medical condition that requires consuming certain types of food at prescribed times throughout the day, then please follow your doctor's directive. The church is not asking anyone to ignore a medical necessity. The next area is almsgiving. Sharing those gifts that God has blessed us with is a tangible expression of loving our neighbor. Here are a few suggestions for us to consider this link. Using the Catholic Relief Service's rice bowls that are available in the narthex. It is a practical faith in action program to raise funds to help families in need. We also have the St. Vincent de Paul Society and food collection bin that is also found in the narthex along with donations for the center in Asbury Park that serves those with HIV. We will also have our collection today specifically for the St. Vincent de Paul Society's good work. And almsgiving also includes donating our time and our skills, such as volunteering in various parish ministries, being a CCD catechist, or getting involved with any number of community outreach programs. The third area is prayer, talking with God each day. One of the best ways we can pray is by joining our prayer to the Eucharistic prayer at daily or weekly Mass. Our parish community also prays the Stations of the Cross each Friday, after the 11 a.m. Friday morning Mass, and again at 7 p.m. each Friday evening during Lent. Private prayer can include the Rosary, Eucharistic Adoration, the Liturgy of the Hours, Lectio Divina, and Centering Prayer. These three areas, fasting, prayer, and almsgiving, are all necessary elements to achieve our Lenten spiritual tune-up. So let us begin this very moment with a practical illustration. Picture, if you will, a large circle. Now, place into that circle those things in life that you consider most important in life. One thing that we might all include in our circle is food and water. We might also include family members, relatives, friends, pets, money, electricity, work, and medical care. Still others might add movies, entertainment, social media, sports, music, or a vacation. The things that we place inside our circle are as varied and unique as each of us who are here today, simply because it identifies who we are and what we value most in life. As we consider those things inside our circle, I want to ask this important question. Where is Jesus in my circle? Is he in the center? Is he along the edge? Is he outside the circle? Some of us may discover that Jesus is nowhere to be found. Lent is that perfect time of year to look into our hearts and ask this challenging question. Where does Jesus fit into the things that I cherish most in my life? And if for whatever reason, Jesus is not in the center of our circle, the church gives us this special time of year to get that spiritual tune-up and rearrange our life priorities to place Jesus into his proper place within our life circle. Listen once again to the words of the prophet Joel in our first reading. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart. Give me your heart, not simply your material garments, and return to the Lord. And so today, as we take our first step in the journey, may God give each of us the grace and gifts of the Holy Spirit to place Jesus in the center of our lives, not only for the next 40 days, but for each and every day for the rest of our lives. 
until that glorious day when we see Jesus face to face and hear those glorious words, well done, good and faithful servant. Now enter into the kingdom that my heavenly Father has prepared for you.